Hi everybody, it's Kenton here from Kenton Young Travel. Today we are in Wilcox, Saskatchewan, visiting Notre Dame's Rare Book Vault. Now, I've read about the Rare Book Vault online, but I can't believe the stories I'm hearing. I've been told that the Rare Book Vault contains books from old European monasteries. It still has the chains attached to them that they used to use to keep the books in the monasteries. I've also read that some of the books in the Rare Book Vault are written on actual, like, animal skin. And that uh, the skin, when pulled and stretched to make into paper, or a variant of paper, the scar tissue disintegrates. And it becomes, like, with holes in it. Almost like you'd imagine if, like, moths were eating paper. But it's natural, the natural process of it. And because it was so pro time processing to stretch the skin and make it into um, paper, they just used it anyway. So I'm really excited to see what the Rare Book Vault has all in it. Because from what I've seen online, there's a lot of books in this Rare Book Vault. And they go back centuries. Like, I think 1300s, even maybe before that. So this will be a fascinating blog. I have no idea what to expect other than that my mind is going to be blown by the Rare Book Vault. I was just given a tour of the old book vault at uh, Notre Dame and Wilcox. And also some of the other parts of the museum as well. This is absolutely fascinating. I especially loved learning about the history of Notre Dame, learning about the history of the vault, of the collections, and all the parts of history that have all kind of come together over the centuries to come here. Everything from, you know, ruins from Hiroshima to the Boer War in South Africa to the Holocaust to, you know, all parts of history, the Catholic Reformation, the rise of Protestantism, Martin Luther, uh, it's, a, it's a museum in itself, and it all kind of brings things together, parts of history that would otherwise be uh, not talked about or perhaps forgotten over the years. I'll show you some of the books I found, and I'll show you around the, the museum itself, which is absolutely fascinating. Here you can see, uh, it's a book of decrees by Pope Gregory X, and it's written on goat skin. Now, goat skin uh, was very valuable at the time, so they were very careful with how they wrote things and how many words they could fit on each on each page. And they used uh, they wrote this written this all by hand. It's not with a printing press. Uh, it's all written by monks in monasteries. And this chain here you see on top, they would use that to chain it into the monastery so that people, particularly thieves or maybe other monks, wouldn't steal them and sell them. Monks wouldn't sell them, but thieves would sell them. So the, the chain is on the book so that they would lock it in place in the monastery. When the monks would change monasteries, they would even attach the chained books to their own persons so that they wouldn't lose them or misplace them on the travels. Now here's another book about with, with goatskin paper. See here, this is a manuscript of the Buddha and the gold legends of the saints from the 13th century. Again, you know, you can see the the care and the the effort gone into transcribing all the words on the paper and the lines they made uh, to keep everything in, in line. Of course, they didn't have loose leaf paper like we have today. They had to do everything by hand. Here's another great example of it. You can see these these letters. Not only symbolize the beginning of new paragraphs, but also a story or a tale, either involving like tragedy or a miracle or something important and the, and the long tails that these letters have down onto the page now you notice here uh this is this book is the life of saint martin of tours for the 13th century now you can see here like this bottom of this page is cut off and that's because when they made these books they would write them on like a 90 degree angle because their hands couldn't touch the goat skin or else it would, it would it would damage it and it would smear it so they wrote it so they wouldn't be touching it these days we can use gloves, but then they this had a particular angle. And they couldn't go too far down because they were bending down to write it. So they cut off the bottom of the pages and they made little Bibles of it instead. This is the famous Nuremberg Chronicle, which was um, the history of the world from, from the very beginning until 1492. And it's all, uh, this is printed by a printing press, but the artwork in it is done by hand. And it's, created by wooden blocks that were carved backwards to be printed and pushed onto the page. Can look at the level of detail on this. The lines on her face, her eyebrows, 
the book pages, the lines. You can see the lines even in the book kind of match the lines in these books too. And just the the incredible ornate detail you have. Now the story of this book is absolutely incredible. If I got this correct, um, and I believe this book um, was brought to the New World following the Second World War, and I believe it was. Yeah. And that collected and kept the book and eventually sold it to Notre Dame through an absolutely incredible turn of events. Here you can see some of the sheepskin. Uh, it's faded a lot more than the goat skin has. Um, that could be because of the way it was originally um, stored, but also the way maybe perhaps that the skin has decayed over the over the centuries. This isn't part of the rare book vault, but I found this room absolutely fascinating. It's full of different uh, historical artifacts and artwork uh, throughout the centuries, and it's it's international. It has artwork and it has artifacts from every continent, pretty much, of the world. Uh, a lot of this is dedicated toward Rex Beach. Now, Rex Beach was a friend of Father Murray, one of the founders of Notre Dame, and he donated his his collection of books and all of his research and many of his possessions to Notre Dame after he passed away. So this entire place is dedicated towards Rex Beach. You see here, the entire room is dedicated to him and his accomplishments and his efforts to improve humanity. But some of the things on this wall I find it absolutely so, so incredible. So here is, um, shell from the First World War. Here's what I believe to be like a fossilized heart. Here's uh, some stone from a quarry in Manitoba. This is a rock from um, the bombing of Hiroshima. Now I imagine the rock isn't that radioactive because if I was discussed in my blog in the past, a lot of the energy from the bomb turned into heat, not radiation. So it might be slightly radioactive, but like Hiroshima now is not that radioactive, plus like Chernobyl. So there's a good chance this rock isn't that radioactive. It just is burnt black by the heat. Jackals came up. There's a whole lot of history out there because Father Murray didn't keep a lot of records of what he had. It's thought that these were used uh, in the 1880s during the Riel Rebellion, but their purpose, if they were ever used or their origin um, is not is unknown. So I don't make any assumptions on what they were used for, if they were even used at all, but they did date to the 1880s in Northern Saskatchewan. And we know that some things happened up there during, uh, during the resistance. I also found this dagger to be really interesting too, because it is made out of uh, bone. The handle here, I won't touch it, is made out of bone. And it's from South Africa. Uh, they told me during the Boer War, that's when it was either used or it was brought over here and you can see the art the the fine details on it absolutely absolutely incredible they also showed me these art paintings from throughout throughout this area and how they were done on sandpaper and they were done so detailed and so precisely to show just like the faces and the challenges of indigenous people these two especially are the same man but taken decades apart and it shows how the loss of their livelihood the loss of their culture the loss of their language has really aged him this belongs to wolf tail and you can see here he's he's much younger more hopeful here you can see his eyes have aged his skin has aged he just looks worried about the future and for good reason honestly So the entire museum, uh, it hasn't been open to the public since the pandemic hit. And they said I was probably one of the first people here since since March. Uh, so to see all this stuff uh, is absolutely incredible. Some of the things they have to update and change, like the pages in the book, they have to flip.
to keep them restored and they have to dust things and rearrange some of the, the pages in the books they have to flip to prevent the light from damaging them or they have to dust and they have to move some of the displays around but to see this like this is absolutely incredible and it's it's so wonderfully interesting so I just finished up a tour of the archives building and one of the things that came up was that uh father murray traveled to both um Rome to see the Pope and to Saudi Arabia to see uh, King Fasmil, I believe his name was, to try and build a tower uh, to unify all the world religions, like the, the main three Abrahamic religions, I should say. And he wanted to build a tower both in Rome, and the Pope was totally for that. And he also wanted to build one in, I think it was uh, Saudi Arabia, and the King wasn't so keen about that. He re reluctantly agreed. I think he also mentioned on the tour that they did go in Jordan as well, which I found interesting because Jordan was like, I believe, the first uh, Christian country outside of Israel when it was founded, when the relig religion was founded. But they told me that there was a tower here in Wilcox that kind of unite all three of the religions together. But there's also a funeral in that same building today in about an hour. So we'll see if we can even get in. I really, really hope so because it sounds fascinating. So I found the door into the tower, and you can see here it says on top, Open ye gates, so the righteous nation clinging to the root truth may enter in. And on the door we have the three different religions. Here we have Judaism and the stone tablets given to Moses. And down here we have how it looks to be Jesus preaching to the apostles or the followers. And here we have what I believe to be... Uh, Islam and the reclamation of Mecca by Muhammad. Now I don't know if that's Muhammad because they don't often depict Muhammad in drawings, so it could just be uh, Mecca in general. Uh, but I I don't know much about this. Uh, it's fascinating, really. We'll see if we can go inside and see what we can see what we can find. So I wasn't sure what to expect in here, but the four walls of this room are three of the walls are dedicated to each of the world world's major religions, the Abrahamic religions, and the fourth wall are uh, affirmations from some of the world's greatest leaders, like John Kennedy, Dwight Eisenhower, Albert Einstein, Charles Darwin. But this wall we're looking at right here, the floor even says it is the Muslim wall. And a uh, Muslim is an older term for Muslim. Uh, perhaps, perhaps in these days it'd be better to call it Islamic wall, but it, it, it's dated a bit, but that's all right because it is an older, older um, tower. You see over here it starts with some quotes from Muhammad and some quotes about Islam and Islamabad. Here it says, There is no God but Allah. Muhammad is the Apostle of Allah. Here you can see actually a picture I showed earlier of Father Murray meeting with the king of um, Saudi Arabia. And actually it's funny because they said that after he met a week later, his uh, I think it was his nephew killed the king of Saudi Arabia. So they say that Father Murray had nothing to do with that, but it just happened to happen right after he visited. I'm not sure what this is here that we're looking at. Um, it looks to me kind of like um, like the temples in Mecca, the the mosques, but I'm not completely certain. Again, like this is such a detailed, ornate um, goblet, but I don't know what it is for. Uh, this is a very interesting part of the, the wall. It says here, uh, the meeting between Prince Khaled Ben Fasil, and I'm sorry if I've mispronounced that, meeting with Paul and Carol Hill uh, in Jeddah of January 2019. And it says here, um, that the prince's message to us and others in the group was that you cannot be a good Muslim without believing in Christianity and Judaism. Quran clearly states this as it builds the message of Christ in the Old Testament. They view Christ as a very important prophet in Muslim tr tradition. And is this one of those things that people don't always realize that the, re the three world religions are so closely tied together and it's just people that tear them apart. The religions themselves, the texts, the stories. They only say to, to love one another and that we're all together in this. And that just perhaps like uh, other parts of the story that we don't all listen to, but we all should know about. Now this wall behind me, this is the wall of Christ. 
and it shows uh, some of the scenes, you know, from the crucifixion here. It shows the coming down of the centuries. Here you can see Mont Saint Michael, kind of parallel to Notre Dame Cathedral on the other side of the wall. Here you can see um, the Last Supper. Interestingly, in this depiction of the Last Supper, you can see Jesus's. If I move over, can you see it? You can see Jesus's feet. You can see that on the actual painting of the Last Supper because his feet were taken off by a door, uh, which is I don't know how they thought that was a good idea at the time. And here you can see uh, the list of all the apostles, including Judas. This looks to me like uh, Mary and Jesus. Now this here, this plaque, says that this, this, these small, small pieces of wood here um, came from the actual cross um, that Jesus was crucified upon. So these particles were given to a, us by Archbishop Matthew of Regina. And on this last wall, we see it is the wall of Israel. You see the Ten Commandments, not the originals, of course, because they were destroyed, uh, and not the, the duplicates, because they were, of course, they're inside the Ark of the Covenant, but of replicas. You see the great prophets, and the twelve tribes of Israel. Something I don't, you've never, I've never seen with my own eyes is all twelve names written down like this, and. Uh, you know, the old quote by Abraham of Ur before Abraham of Ur before it became Abraham, that there are no other gods. And you have here, of course, you have Abraham, Jacob, Moses, and David, King David, King David. And just these incredible bronze quotes from Exodus, from uh, Ezekiel, from throughout the centuries of the wall of great affirmations these are quotes from historical powerful people throughout the centuries here of course we have Albert Einstein science of religion is lame religion of science is blind but I cannot believe God plays dice with the universe here you have one from Augustine to him who does what in him lies God will not deny his grace. Here we have one from Dwight Eisenhower. No man or nation can afford to ignore God. Here's Charles Darwin. The grand sequence of events the mind refuses to accept as the result of blind chance. Here's John Kennedy. These rights we hold from the hands of God. Probably Newton. The whole diversity of natural things can have risen from nothing, but the ideas and the will of one necessity, necessarily existing being who is always and everywhere God, supreme, infinite, omnipotent, omniscient, absolutely perfect. I wasn't sure what to expect when coming to the tower. I thought it'd be, first of all, taller. It's only one level, but that's not the point. This is an absolutely incredible space with three of the world's religions all together and even coming in uh, earlier i saw quotes from buddha and other things to kind of show that this that this uh place is a, a place of universal acceptance of universal religion that the labels and the scriptures and the lessons they all fade away to become one universal truth and it's something that a lot of people forget about thankfully uh I had the opportunity to come here and I was able to arrange this during the pandemic. Uh, not many people do visit right now. They say you usually get hundreds of visitors, but this year has been minimal. The one thing I wish this uh, place had was like a book or something to explain more of this room because there's so much incredible artifacts and history here, but I just don't know it. <laughs> And the thing that bothers me is I like to know what I'm talking about. I like to know the history of things. Even if I'm a little bit off, I like to know just the general premise of what I'm looking at. But some of the things in here are fascinating, like the goblets or the the art artwork or the tablets or the statues or the quotes. Uh, absolutely fantastic, fascinating stuff that I don't know anything about. So this will be this will be my my research for the next little while is to uncovering what this room is all about. Uh, besides just a universal pillar 
uh, in Google Cogs. Now they told me that they wanted to build replicas of this throughout um, in Rome, in Jordan, in Saudi Arabia, and that some of those things of course haven't come yet because of the way the world is, not just now, but just in general. <laughs> Uh, but there's a lot of progress in the Middle East to bring the world religions together to stop the violence and to stop the hatred and to find a universal peace, something that I think we would all love to see. And rooms like this really helped me realize that such a thing is possible, although it takes a lot of work and a lot of belief. So I finished up at the Tower of God, and I went into the church to ask more questions, but like I, I, I was told there, just getting ready for a funeral, so they didn't have a lot of time to talk to me, and Actually, I wasn't even going to go inside because of that, but uh, outside Spears Funeral Home was there, and they told me that you yeah, have an hour and a half to go in and ask around anyway. So I went in, and they told me that to go talk to, you know, give an email to someone, and they can find information for me. And in fact, they actually told me uh, to go talk to Jerry, who I just talked to. So I'm going to be sending him an email about the Tower of God, too. But when I actually was over by the church, I saw the grave of Father Murray, and... Yeah, I never really thought, well, how did the story end with Father Murray? But I guess he's buried here, and that only makes sense because he spent most of his life, you know, making Wilcox and Notre Dame into what it is today, so it only makes sense for him to be buried here on location. So this whole trip has been absolutely incredible. I learned so much, not only about Notre Dame, but about, like, how the old books were made, the monasteries, the different religions, and the Tower of God, and it's just been... This has been a very amazing trip out to Wilcox, something that I didn't expect. I knew that the the rare book vault was going to be interesting, but I had no idea what I was walking into. So, uh, I'll have more information about this in my blog below. Uh, lunchtime, right? Uh, more information about this in my in my blog below. Uh, you check it out. Uh, I'll be doing lots of research about this before it goes out, so I'm sure there'll be more information in the blog than I put in the video. Uh, but again, this is an incredible place, and whenever you can, be sure to visit uh, Jerry, the, the guide who gave me a tour. He's retired now, and he's doing this just kind of because there's no one to replace him right now, but soon, hopefully, they'll hire somebody new, and you can take the tour yourself. And I'm sure once things open up and things change, they would, be love, they would love to have more visitors here, more people, because again, they used to having like 300, 400 visitors a year, and now they're down to one. <laughs> Yours truly. So thank you for coming along today. Thank you for this uh, coming with me to, to Wilcox and to Notre Dame. My name is Kenton DeYoung. This is Kenton DeYoung Travel. And I'll see you next time. Wherever that is.